So enjoy tonight, relax, uh, watch some absolutely wonderful Yorkshire landscape, and please go home appreciating the wonderful talent that we have based in this region that can produce productions like this. Unusual to do Q&A before a film, but I think we all know the story of Wuthering Heights. <coughs> so first of all, Peter Barker, the script writer. Michelle Burke, executive producer, and John Williams, head of production from Mammoth. <laughs> so first of all, I would like a glass of water. <coughs> um, we're going to start at the very beginning, and what always perplexes me is why do people decide to remake a fantastic movie? In this case, why does somebody decide to make a movie of a film that's already been done 13 times? and is a sacred Yorkshire text, and you tread on that warily. Now, I gather it started with Mammoth approaching Peter. Yeah, it did, but the, the, the truth is, Mammoth... A production company is nothing without its writers, and Damien and I had wanted to work with Pete for a long time, and um, you always have a feeling for the next generation of classic stories that people want retold, and frankly, we didn't think Wuthering Heights had been done particularly well that recently. So it seemed ready for a proper remake and we asked Pete if he'd do it for us and it was the, it was the one thing that he said yes to. He'd said no to a lot of other things. So while you're working on <coughs> occupation yeah. um, about Iraq, yeah. you suddenly decide to agree to dive into this uh, piece of wonderful 19th century Yorkshire literature. Yeah, it was the weather that attracted me. After <laughs> right, okay. Uh, it, it, I mean, to go back to your initial point, I think the Hollywood movie is a great movie. I don't think it's a definitive version of the book. And my take on classic adaptations is it, it's a bit like doing cover versions of great pieces of music. You can bring something new out with it. And the two things I wanted to do with this were reclaim Heathcliff from the kind of Byronic version that I think is a misreading and make him somebody physical and visceral and dangerous. And the other thing was to make it a story of redemption, because I think that second half of the book, after, after Cathy dies, I'm sorry if I've given that away for anybody. <laughs> uh, but it's not as bad as Harry Potter. Get out of the way. They all die in the end, and that's that. And, that, and, and that's Yorkshire for you. And the... Uh, the uh, um, I mean, the other risk I'm taking is I'm from Lancashire, so oh I'm not all the... <laughs> Hey, I'll win you round, I'll win you round. The, uh, the, so, um, was to reclaim that second generation. And what she, Emily Bronte does, it's a book of redemption in the end, but it's, it, 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 and they're redeemed by the younger generation. So it's to try and capture something like that. And television, over three hours, you're given that opportunity. In a movie, you're not. Absolutely. No, Michelle has a different interpretation, I believe. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would certainly not contradict me. No, no. I think we, when we, we, we wanted Pete and we wanted Wuthering Heights, we thought it needed to be done, and we truly didn't believe. Pete, Pete wanted to do the whole book, and when he said that, we were so relieved because people, people think the film is the centre section of the book. That it's, it's got a it's bookended by another story. So yeah. You had a very strong sense of the, the, the whole issue of the disintegration of the family. It is about disintegration. Yeah. It's about, it's about passion. Well, it's Pete, this is Pete. This is not me. This is Pete talking. It's about passion and love and how it, it, it disintegrates over the generations. Pete would say redemption. What a happy man he is. He's a, I like yeah. redemption. I think it's yeah. good. Yeah. It generally is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but once you've done this, then you're basically going to people to, to, to ask for money for a second-hand product. You know, you're trying to sell a second-hand car, basically, at this point. It's not a problem. <clears throat> it's, a, it's a classic. You know, every 10 years, there's a whole new generation that don't quite know it, and every 10 years, you, you have a hunger for what you, you, you like. A lot of the new stuff doesn't often work, and actually, there are, we've all got in our hearts little stories that we just want to revisit and be told again, and you want that new interpretation. Pete has done a totally different And when, you, when you're trying to raise the money, have you already got the screenplay together? Are you already... No, you, you, you cannot you, raise on the back money of... without a good script. Yeah. You cannot do anything without a good writer. I'm afraid it just, that's the end. Yeah. So, yeah, we get a good, we get a good writer who <coughs> delivers a good script, and then we, we've got something to go out and sell. And, you know, we've, as you know, we've shot a lot in, in, in Yorkshire. We've done two years running shooting here. And it's a fantastic region. It's got the crew. It's got the infrastructure. It, 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 it's got, a, I mean, it's got everything. I mean, we just happen to have done two, 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 um, 
two classic pieces, but although one had a little bit of contemporary in it, but it, it's got everything on offer and a fantastic <coughs> infrastructure. And Screen Yorkshire have been huge, huge supporters of, of production. Well, I think we should stop there. You know, I think that's it, really. <coughs> Not what else you can say, really. <coughs> it's only going to go downhill now, I think. Um, <laughs> when, so when you, when you start on the text, and it's a text that everybody knows, people who start watching the film are going to start mouthing the lines as, as, they, as they appear. Mm. Are, you, are you aware that you're working with this, this audience that's out there? Well, yeah, I think to begin with, you've got that kind of... That, um, on your shoulder and then you have to get rid of that and get into the story and what I actually did was take I got another copy of the book and actually took it apart physically took it apart and put it back together chronologically because the first thing I wanted to nail was the chronology and the families and you know and it's no it's no you know it's a difficult book for lots of reasons not least that so many people are called the same thing and uh, you know just on a practical level in terms of bringing that to the screen on a pragmatic level, you've got to watch who's calling who what at every one, any one time. Um, and then there are certain key speeches that you can't leave out. The I am Heathcliff speech has to be in there, as far as I'm concerned. The, 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 these are the, the classic moments that you, you can't... You might want to stage them slightly differently. And then there are moments where, that you want to um, elaborate on. That Nally, Because obviously it's a very complicated novel where... You know, Mr. Lockwood appears and Nellie's reporting to him and so on. But there are things that Nellie alludes to that I wanted to flesh out, including the way in which Heathcliff corrupts Gimmerton on his return. Uh, as a writer, that's all very exciting because she hints at it, but we don't actually see it. So there are kind of three stages. One is just typing because I'm copying Emily Bronte. The other is more like ventriloquism. So right. a, full, a full range of variety yeah. acts. Yeah. <laughs> and you said earlier that... the. the what you can do in three hours on television. Did you ever feel that it was longer than three hours? You know, Brighthead turns out to 12 hours on TV. And I think the first draft was 12 hours. Right. <laughs> well. um, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I think it, yeah, I think it could live in a, in a, in a longer yeah. form. Yeah. Uh, but, um, you know, it, it, it is what it is. And the, yeah. and the more you read the book, the, the longer it becomes. Because at first, you think, oh, this structure's really clumsy, I can sort this out. And then by the, by the second read, you think, this structure is actually a work of genius. Right. And I'm not, and there we go. <laughs> so you, you were, at a moment, tempt, tempted to correct Emily Bronte, but then you realised your mistake. <laughs> Always. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> That's understandable. <clears throat> but, so you said it was easy to get the money, but who... Who are you? Oh, no, no. Oh, sorry. No, we've never said that. Oh, sorry. I miss, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That, that, we've never said that. So, I think it's probably the way I was presenting it. Yeah. It, it was, um, um, so, so, how did you, you set about sort of selling the project to... John? Funding television production mm. these days, it's, it's a bit of a jigsaw puzzle, really. Um, you know, long gone are the days when, you, when a, a UK broadcaster could afford to fully fund, um, certainly a, a piece with the, with the creative ambition of Wuthering Heights. Um, so, you know, you, you obviously, you, you start with your script, um, you have your UK broadcaster, we were very fortunate in terms of Michelle and Damien have a fabulous relationship with um, a company called WGBH in America, who back quite a lot of um, particularly classic um, production um, out, of, out of the UK. Um, and then um, it's the role of somebody like me to then work out how you can fill the rest of that gap. And um, as Michelle said, we've... We've got a fantastic history with, with Yorkshire and with Screen Yorkshire in particular. Um, I think Pete probably would have hung me out to dry if we hadn't have shot it here uh, anyway. Um, so it was the natural place to bring it, but it, it might be the natural home for something. But um, unfortunately, this, in this day and age, unfortunately in many ways, um, there, is, there, there, are, there are key financial considerations all the time as well. Um, and when you're making those big decisions, as in where to base your productions, you, you, you you know, they're, they're a key component of those decisions um, and the investment that Screen Yorkshire offered us and were able to make in the production um, was an absolutely decisive and, and you know, hugely important factor. <laughs>